The Great Search brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Thank you, DigiKey. Every single week, Lady Adafruit, the power of engineering, help you, yes, you find all the things you want to find on digikey.com. Take it away. Okay, and my hair is like DigiKey red, right? Yeah. Um, okay, so this week I worked on uh, this design, which is a uh, underboard for, oops, uh, sorry, an underboard for uh, the Raspberry Pi Pico. And, um, I was saying like, oh, you know, I have a stem QT connector and a reset button. So I squirt C and resets easy. And then I have an enable switch. But I also wanted to add um, battery charging, because especially for the Pico W, it's wireless. Maybe you want to have like a IoT thing that runs on a battery with battery charging. And so um, I kind of borrowed a circuit that I use for um, the, let me get rid of the sidebar. It's so big, especially in 720p. It's very noticeable. Okay, sorry. Okay. Um I borrowed the circuit that I use for um the feather boards, which uses an MCP73831, um, has two LEDs, one for charging red, one green, which is like done. And then um it's capacitors, you can set the uh uh charge rate with a resistor. Um, and then there's like a pass transistor. But I realized I never actually covered uh, LiPo chargers. And so um, even though I use this one, by the way, there are a lot of other options on DigiKey, but even this one has a lot of like, and especially during the part shortage, uh, you got to really watch out. Not all numbers are the same for this part. There's a lot of like dash X, Y, Z. That's what I want to watch out for. So let's go to uh, DigiKey and search for battery charger. So what we want is a battery charger that will charge 3.7 nominal 4.2 volt max batteries from USB because that's what we're getting like five volts in and I want something inexpensive that can also it doesn't require I squared C to set up it just is set by a resistor because a lot of the really fancy chargers um have like I squared C or they have one wire or whatever I don't want you know where you can do all sorts of configuration and like also monitors the battery I want something like cheap and easy. Um, and again, resistor set. So you set the resistor and then here I have my little guide that reminds me um, what, what you set it to in order to um, set the, the charge rate. And, you know, um, I'll be honest, actually, this says one amp. This, act, this charger actually can't do one amp, which we'll also talk about. There are some other chargers that can. So let's uh, go here and then we'll look for battery chargers. Okay, so there's like big battery chargers, there's battery management, but we want battery charging chips. So let's go here. So there's, there's 3,000, there's quite a few. Um, and you know, they come from anything like DFN and SOCT to like, they can get a lot of pans and very complicated. You know, they come in BGA also. So let's just uh, try to pare down this massive number. We're only gonna look for the active items. And we're only gonna look for ones that can handle one cell. Because there's some that do two or more. And then I'll also get, I'll pick up the dash as well. Um, and then uh, let's just, uh, well, we only want surface mount. And let's just say we only want in stock. So it's available to purchase now. Chip shortage is kind of over. So basically if it's in stock, that means it's going to, you know, any, if it's not in stock, it means it's probably like not available um, and no marketplace just because I don't want to have the double entries for uh, externally sold parts. OK, next up. Um, so the battery I'm using is a lithium ion slash polymer battery, and um, there are other chemistries available, but pretty much, you know, I'm going to pick up the dash just because who knows. Lithium ion and polymer, lithium iron phosphate, I think is something different. Multi-chemistry. I actually don't want any of the multi-chemistry ones because those are always going to be more expensive than just a dedicated uh, charger. And then <clears throat> I want to um, also set the voltage of the, actually, I actually don't know if we can set the voltage. Well, let me do this. Let me just filter on the um, on the chemistry. Okay, good. So that's much, much chiller. Um, okay, so next up, charge current max. Well, I really feel like if I'm going to charge these batteries, it needs to be at least 200. 
milliamps and uh you know i can go higher but honestly like no charger that's going to be affordable is going to be over like three amps and then the battery pack voltage i want it to be uh, for these batteries that we're using so these are uh light poly batteries you know if you're using other batteries you know go to town but the ones i'm using i think i actually call them lithium polymer but oops, sorry great um these are 3.7 volt nominal 4.2 volt max and so watch out because it's even though they're it says 3.7 volts on the battery you don't actually want 3.7 volts you want like uh 4.2 so i'm going to pick also the ones that can do you know whatever but i definitely don't want the ones that do higher voltages this is all i want 4.4.2 and then interface i actually don't want i squared c or usb i want something that is again a very simple interface so just uh gpio programmable and this will reduce the number quite a bit um yeah now we're only getting like okay there's one or one or two um uh one or two uh one two or three cells okay now i think we're good i mean the voltage you know i don't care as long as over five all of them are over five um current max i think is okay so let's let's look at some of the options so we've got that mcp 738 standard option and you know they have they have a ton in stock um there's also the 832 but there's and they have them also in dfn but there are other families. Um, I'll say the BQ BQ series from TI, they're quite good. Um, these are, you know, uh, they also have a, a charge LED. Um, you can set the current with a resistor. Um, some of them have like termination timers, like how long you wait before you time out or whatever. Um, they also have a power good output. So, you know, the more pins you get, the more options you're going to get and this also has a temperature reading which i'll say you know if you're if you're charging at a higher if if it's if you are going to have people with um batteries that are charging at a very high rate uh like one c or above it's not a bad idea to have a temperature monitor especially in like a production product for this board I'm making, it's very simple. It's like low cost and the charge rate is already kind of set quite low. So I'm not worried about it, but a thermistor, a built-in thermistor battery pack is never a bad idea. So one thing I'll mention is the battery charger I use on that board, that design does not have a thermistor built in. It's a good idea, especially if it's going to be used outdoors because at um, very low and very high temperatures, you do have to change the charge rate. There's also um, ST has, you know, a nice low cost, battery charger one thing that is nice about this one is it does up to 800 milliamps which again the charger I'm going to show does not do 800 and it's very simple it just has like led program power in battery it's like there's something quite nice about it um and it, I like that it has a little bit higher input supply voltage max up to 10 volts not that you should use 10 volts but like sometimes I've seen people like they plug in like some random off the shelf you know usb power adapter and it like kind of floats a little bit above five volts and sometimes it can actually get popped kind of rare but it does happen one thing that i'll say that is i've never seen is a battery charger chip that is reverse battery protected which would be kind of cool because i do one of the things i and end in in this small package at a reasonable price because i do see a lot of um customers they end up we warn people like 8 billion times, do not buy batteries from Amazon that are the opposite polarity. And then people are like, I plugged in this battery that I bought from Amazon. And then I realized it's reverse polarity. Did I damage it? And I'm like, yeah, it's dead. Like, you, you, it's like, but they're like, I unplugged it within like a minute. And I'm like, it, it, it's done within like 10 microseconds. You can't, you can't unplug it fast enough. Um, that'd be cool. If anyone knows of a battery that does that, you know, or a battery charger that does that, let me know. But this one is nice because it does 800 milliamps. Um, but the one I tend to use is this, uh, <clears throat> get the part number quick, 73831, which is available, um, in, it's kind of the one they have the most of. And there's a couple of different ones in this family. Or first off, they have a DFN version if you want smaller, but there's a 31 and the 32. And then also there's like these letters afterwards, and you do have to watch out for these letters. 
So one, the, there's the difference between the 831 and the 832 is the 831 has a status pin that can, yeah, so this is the difference. The 831 has a push pull output on the status, whereas the 832 only has a open drain pull down. Why does that matter? Because in this case, on this board, not every board that I use this on feathers, I don't use two LEDs. You can on the 831 only have two LEDs, one, for charging and one for completed charging. And then it floats in the middle when there's like no battery detected. Whereas the 832, you it only does in charging. Like there's only the orange light. There is no green completed light. I don't like that you can have both. So I tend to use the 831 uh, because I like to have the two LED option and I only want to stock one part. Next, if we go down to the product identification, there's a lot of options <laughs> that you'll see. So you'll see MCP7831 dash 2CI, 2AD, 2DC. And you do have to watch out because they're not the same. Um, one, the regulation voltage. The T is just uh, tape and reel versus uh, tube, I think. But the regulation voltage is that first digit. So if you get the 738, 738, 73831-3 or dash 4 or dash 5 that's going to have a battery pack voltage that's higher than 4.2 volts why would you ever get that there are some batteries like um that have anodes that are a little bit higher um they're not low cost they're a little bit more expensive but you see them in like you know some automotive projects and some i've seen them in like skateboards and stuff they they have a slightly higher voltage due to the anode cathode chemistry um, so they have a little bit more power you get out of them, uh, total wattage. But you have to have, you cannot have the, the regulated voltage here be higher than the battery pack where you could damage it. You can't charge a 4.2 at 4.4. But you can charge a 4.4 at 4.2, but you just, like, you won't get the, all the power possible out of it. And second, there is um, the termination voltage versus the regulated voltage. And this has to do with... When you first, if you have like a dead battery or very, very low battery, you sort of trickle charge it until it gets up to like 3.2, 3.3 volts. So like, you know, there's a little bit of like how much current versus, you know, the max amount of current and then like how long do you do it for whatever. Uh, you know, that's not as important. So I've sometimes used the AD instead of the AC because it's like, you know, it's like so closely related um but do check which one and then there's two packages there's the dfn and the ot that said the one i use the most again it's like kind of the standard standard issue is like again i like the 31 and uh 2c 2ac means 4.2 volts ac is kind of like, like default um termination current uh trickle current and it's in stock in digikeys so let's just put on dark mode yeah and it's in stock and it's like, you know, pretty cheap, like 60 cents per. Um, some people are like, why don't you use like the really cheap, inexpensive, like 20 cent chips that are available that are like, you know, from like random ass companies. Uh, and the answer is you really don't want to like go cheap on your battery charger. Um, I always use the genuine um, microchip parts because like, I know that they have good engineers. Um, the really inexpensive parts I, it, it's just too risky it's like if you don't charge a battery right um it's very bad for the battery and you know it can be bad for the person handling the battery so uh i recommend getting like a genuine part from digikey so mcp73831t to aci that's our pick of the week